it says um, wire carrying some amount of current. Let me just start sketching it. I got a picture of a wire uh, carrying some amount of current that I'm given passes between two poles of a strong magnet. All right, that is perpendicular to its field. Oh, I, I see what it is. Okay, <laughs> such a weird wording. So what it's saying is the so so let's just start from the what logically comes first. <laughs> what logically comes first is actually the poles of a strong magnet between the poles of a strong magnet. So let me sketch that first. I have a strong magnet, and think of like a horseshoe magnet or something that brings the two poles together. Let me see if I can draw that. So let's say one pole is the north pole. And there's another pole, that's a south pole. Between these two poles, there's going to be a magnetic fields. Let me draw them uh, in a way that, that they appear uniform. And what it's saying is, given this setup, uh, there's going to be a wire placed perpendicular to the magnetic field. So I have magnetic field, and I'm going to draw. So, and you know, there's more than one way to draw uh, the current so that it's perpendicular to this. Basically, any plane, any uh, line that's within this horizontal plane is going to be perpendicular to these lines. I'm just going to draw a direction for a current that goes just uh, horizontally left to right. It'll, it's perpendicular to the field. And it's saying um, it's giving us the length of the segment, uh, 4 centimeters and that it's experiencing some amount of force. Um, so, and I guess uh, given the direction, so direction of current to the right, uh, cross B downward, the V cross B is, uh, or the current cross B is uh, pointing into the screen, so the magnetic force in this scenario should be pointing into the screen. Um, so I guess the uh, the ch most challenging part here might be t knowing the correct formula because as, so far in the other questions we worked with the magnetic force being charge times V cross B. And in this uh, context with the current um, and some length of segment of wire, it can be difficult to see how this relates to that. Now, if you go into the, the conduction model of a you know, conductor, then you can work out from here how it relates to, relates to the next quantity. But I prefer to just uh, memorize it. That is, if you are looking for magnetic force on a current carrying uh, wire, then that magnetic force can be expressed this way as um, I guess the uh, simplest way to write it that's maybe a little bit confusing. I as a scalar, amount of current, times L as a vector, length of vector, cross product with B. You can see some uh, some common part, you know, cross B is in both of them. All right, that must be the magnetic force part. It's a matter of if uh, charge times velocity can be expressed in some meaningful way as current times the length segment of the uh, current carrying wire. Here, L, the vector L would be something like this. That would be the vector L. So um, your textbook does derivation. I'm not sure if I do derivation in the lecture, but we are going to use the correct formula that will help answer this easy. <laughs> and uh, we've already set up the wire so that it's perpendicular to the field. So this actually simplifies quite a bit. The way it simplifies the force is I, and normally it would have been L, B, sine theta, where theta is the angle between these two vectors. For this question, the theta is 90 degrees, so sine theta is 1. So given this force on the current carrying wire, let's see, they actually gave us the force, they gave us the length, and um, they gave us the current, Yeah, and we are looking for B, so let's just solve it for B. B is the force divided by current times the length of the wire that's inside the magnetic field. I think I'm going to do this uh, in, in, in O from alpha again uh, so that I don't have to. Um... Actually, I guess I could do this uh, in Sage Math. So to do it in Sage Math, I would just plug in the numbers, making sure I convert everything to basic SI units. So the force would be 2.16 Newton 
divided by current, ampere or coulombs per second, that's the basic SI unit, 30 times, now L, I have to be careful, it's giving me 4 centimeter, I want 0 0.04 meters for basic SI units, but not put in units. So uh, when you're plugging numbers into Sage math, you keep everything in basic SI units, and you trust that um, the final unit will come out right. I kept everything in basic SI unit, so the magnetic field value out of this should be in Tesla. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so calculate that. And the result is 1.8 Tesla. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that is pretty high. I can see why it's saying strong magnet. Yeah, 1.8 Tesla. I don't think I have anything in the lab that can produce 1.8 Tesla of uh, magnetic field. I have a pretty big neodymium magnet, but I'm not sure if even that does. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this question.